Beautiful song, wasn't it? Yeah. Bless him, beautiful song. Peaceful. Bless him, Lord. We're going to be over in Revelations this morning. Bless him, Lord. Revelations 22. Bless him, Lord Jesus. A lot of people say, uh oh. You say Revelation. Uh oh. See, I just don't understand Revelations. A lot of people are really afraid of it. Don't even want to read it. That's the truth. But I'll tell you what. God's Word is simple. Amen. Amen. He makes it simple that all can understand. Amen. He's not going to leave anybody in the world. He wants everybody to understand what the truth is and what's going to happen. Bless me. And I'm glad of that, aren't you? Amen. <clears throat> Revelation 22, and we'll start in verse 10. If you're there, say amen. 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 Okay. That's good. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Now here John, the revelator, was writing this. And he was in a vision. And an angel told him what to write. Do you know what a vision is? A vision is in a state of really not sleep, but it's unconsciousness. Bless and God talks to people a lot of times in that state. Now God spoke to me in dreams, told me what to do with situations. I had a problem. I went to the Lord. He told me how to solve that problem in a dream. Bless and through the Bible, Jesus has spoke to people in dreams. He warned Joseph to get Jesus out of Jerusalem to get him to Egypt. Amen. Because he knew what was going to happen. That's the Lord. Then even in the dream, he told him to bring him back. And all through the Bible, it tells us when people are in a, in a vision, a, a state of a spirituality, unconscious, but God's presence, he can tell you how to do things. Amen. You know, answer prayers and work out situations. He told John what to do here. How to, not to seal this book, but to open it up and let them uh, read the, this saying that he was telling to do that when he become conscious. Lord. God will speak to you, and then you should act on it. If you do not act on what God tells you to do, Listen. you're disobeying God. Amen. When you know it's God telling you this. Last Sunday, I was at uh, Kentucky Park. I preached there, and I told him a little story that sometimes you're not even in an a, a, a unconscious state when God speaks to you. But God spoke to me one time. I was in Myers' store checking Bless out. <clears throat> and God you. told me to speak to this woman that was in front of me with this little boy. He said, speak to her. You know when God speaks to you, don't you? Amen. You know it's God. Amen. You know it. You know that, that you feel this this spirit about it. It's not just your conscience. It's not you. It, it's God telling you to do something. And He told me to speak to that woman. And I said, Lord, I don't know that woman. Why they think I'm some kind of weirdo? And you know how the world is today. You step out of line just a little bit, you get the label. They, they might think I was a pervert or something. And, and I was worried. So I, I said, well, well, she began to check out and take her stuff. And the Lord told me again, speak to that woman. Now I'm feeling bad because I'm disobeying God. Bless I'm disobeying God and knowing it. I said, well, I shouldn't be doing this. Here I'm having a, a conversation with my own uh, conscience. 
I, I wanted to do it, but I was afraid to do it. She checked out. She took off with that little boy. And I'm feeling bad now. I mean, I, I feel the pressure on me. Richard, I, I felt the pressure on me. But I said, you know, and I felt bad. I didn't do that. So I checked out there and got my bag, and I turned around, and she was sitting over there on the bench with her little boy. She gave him uh, some money for that gumball machine so he could have some gum or whatever that's in that machine. And I said to myself, they're waiting on me. And God told me again to speak to that woman. So I went and I just walked over to her. Because I knew if I just speak to that woman, something bad was going to happen to me. I might not have made it to the park. Line. I'm telling you, I, I felt burdened. And I just went over to her and I said, ma'am, this may sound strange to you, but God told me to speak. That's all I said. Just what God told me. Speak to that woman. I just did what he told me to do. And all of a sudden the tears started coming down her cheeks. She started crying. And she said, I've been praying that God would send somebody to tell me that he's still with me. That he's not left me. She was a bad sweet woman. She had gotten out of church. But she wanted some place to go God's assurance, God's stamp of approval yeah. that he was still with her, that she could get her son into a church where she, he could hear the gospel. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, isn't that something? <clears throat> Bless the Lord. And, and I never, that's all I said. And I told her, I said, you have a blessed day. She said, thank you so much. But you know what, me? I was just that vessel that Brother Mike yeah. spoke of this morning. Yeah. Yeah. We're just vessels to be used by God. And then I, when I walked out of there, that burden that was on me yeah. because I disobeyed was lifted because I obeyed. John obeyed the word of God. God was right in here telling us that, well, that this uh, seal, not the saints of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Notice what he says there about the unjust, our unjust steel, the filthy, filthy steel, the righteous Righteous steel Amen. and the holy, Lord. the holy seal. What that means is when the trump of God sounds and time will be no more, whatever you are is sealed. Yeah. Boom. That fast. Amen. It's sealed. And there's no way you can change it. You're either saved or lost. That's right. And the Bible says that's going to happen within a twinkle of an eye. Amen. Amen. I used to know what that was, how fast it was, but I, I've forgotten. I'm getting old. I've forgotten. But it's going to come so fast yes. that the filthy will still be filthy, mm -hmm. yeah. but the holy will still be holy. Right. And the righteous will still be righteous. You will not have a chance or time or opportunity right. to change. Mm -hmm. Everything will be just the way it is at that moment of time. Because Jesus, the King of Kings, is coming. He said he was going to come, didn't he? Yes. He promises he's going to come back. Right. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Right. And I would not have told you that if I hadn't said I was going to come again. That's right. And he is going to come again. Amen. And now look at this world we're living in now. Yes. The Bible warns us about the trouble, the wars, and evil in the world. Is there evil in this world? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I'm 70 years old. And I've never seen such evil in the world as it is today. I've never known a time today as it used to be that I've known in my life. There's always been killings and murderers and trouble in the world, but not on the magnitude that it is today. Amen. And downright evil. Yes. Downright evil. People flaunting evil in God's face. Yeah. God's not going to stand for that. God's not going to stand for that. He's going to do something about it. Look at verse uh, 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, and given unto every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Alpha, the Omega. And brother, I'm going to tell you, if he's, he's all saints, then he's everything in between. Because he's got it all covered. 
God is still in charge. God is still in charge. I was in a shop just the other day. We was down in uh, uh, Nashville, Indiana. And I was in a store uh, talking to a man. And uh, he was talking about the world being in the shape it is. But I told him, God is still in charge. And he says, you know, you're right. God is still in charge. And he said, one day, he's going to come back and, and change everything. I said, he surely will, because he promised it. And I said, you can take that to the bank. So he was a Christian man. He believed in the Son of God. He believed he is coming back. Look at verse 14. Blessed are they, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have, uh, may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whoever loveth and maketh a lie. I don't know Amen. if you've been noticing lately. Bless the Lord Jesus. Some of the biggest liars in this world today are people in high places. Yeah. Do you ever notice that? Bless the Lord. The people that tell you you've got to do something, or you've got to do it this way, or you better be careful, they're the very ones that are doing the same thing. I I I, uh, I listen to Rush Limbaugh on, on radio, and Rush says that if you want to know about a liberal know what they're up to? Listen to what they accuse other people of doing. They've already done it. And you know, he says, that's the truth. It's the truth. They're lying. They're lying to us. And the Bible here talks about liars. It talks about the whoremongers, the murderers, idolaters. And the world's full of them. Washington, D.C. is full of lying. No one wants to tell you the truth. It's a terrible state that we're living in. We cannot trust those that we put into office to be honest with us. It's a terrible state. And evil is just running them on. They want nothing to do with it. They just let it. Everything that's right is now wrong. That's right. Everything that's wrong is now right. Everything's upside down. Jesus is warning about that. He's telling us about that. He told John, don't seal this book. Let the people read that to know this is what's going to happen. And are we not? The church, there is a falling away in the church. Amen. There's people that have been dedicated, but they've, they've slipped through the cracks, if you will, or just slept away. They don't come anymore. I wonder where they're at. I told my wife many times, as we travel around with all the different churches, Bless I didn't see this one. I didn't see that one. And where's this one at? What, what happened to that one? Did, did they pass? No, they just don't come no more. I've fallen away. Why is that? Why is that, you wonder? Have they lost? The love of their life. Bless the Lord. And your first love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Without that love, brother, you're nothing. That's right. You're nothing without that That's love. Right. But I'm glad. I'm glad when I come to a church, I, I can see those that do come and worship in spirit and the truth. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They're not being pulled away. They've not been fooled. And they don't believe a lie. Amen. They know where the truth is. And it's in this book and in the Word of God. Jesus said in verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto thee these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He is the star of salvation. Amen. Jesus Christ. He explains who he was and where he come from. So there's no doubting, no doubting who he is. And that he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he's coming again. He's coming again. You, you can stake your life on that. He's coming again. Jesus, in verse 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. There are so many people in this world today that are thirsty. Amen. That are dying of thirst. Amen. And the cup of hope is right there in Jesus Christ. That's Yet they will not take it. Amen. They will not take it. I had a preacher friend of mine tell me that he was uh, uh, talking to a man in the hospital. He visited him many times. The man was dying. The man was unsaved. He was lost. And he tried to explain to him about Jesus. He tried to tell him who he was and what he needed to do. Because he was getting ready to leave this world. And the man kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And he told him, 
your time is running out. You have to make a decision. The sin that you have is not your, not your fault, but it's been passed down from Adam. We all are sinful. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's true. But we have a chance to do something about it. We can accept Jesus Christ as our Lord, that one can forgive sin. And only He can forgive sin. And only His blood will count when you die. Because that's the only thing God's going to be looking for. Are you washed in that blood of Jesus Christ? The man died. 